Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor and pleasure to invite you to join me aboard the hype train. This is a video review of Tobot's Quadrant by Young Toys. And this toy is... Of all the things I've ever reviewed, of all the toys I've ever owned, this is my favorite. Oh yes, yeah, so this is my favorite. It'd be uh, very hard for anything in the future to ever top this thing. It's unlikely that I will ever recommend this any figure as much as I recommend this guy. Now before we get into the meat of things, I'm going to do a bit of a size comparison, just so you understand the scale and magnitude of how awesome these things are. This is Deluxe Wheeljack. He is your, um, your average Deluxe car from Transformers, and... Um, Look at by how much he is dwarfed by these things. I mean, I don't know the scale of these things, but they're pretty big. They're maybe roughly the size of the vinyl text or alternators, maybe a bit bigger. Basically, they're really big toys and really big cars. And what's important about that is that these things combine into a single giant robot. So we have a an alternator scale giant transforming robot combiner. And it's awesome. He's huge and he's awesome. So to start out, I'm going to put the cars off to the side. The um, legs are formed by the fire truck, so we're going to be looking at him first because you need to build up when you build this guy. So the fire truck here is very nice. It's a big, hefty, rolls very nicely, and it's a, a super, a super sturdy toy. Like if you gave this to a kid, the most you get would be scuff marks on this uh, nice glossy plastic. That'd be it. A kid could not break this unless he used firecrackers or something. It would take um. Honestly, it take a lot of strength for an adult to break this. Now, if there's one problem I have with this uh, fire truck is that it has not quite as much detail as I would like. Like, for example, there are these huge expanses across the figure that just have no detail. Now, if this guy were half the size, that wouldn't be quite as noticeable because the expanses would be so much smaller. But because he is so big, it is um, a bit noticeable. On the other hand, because this is a toy, not like a... $500 collectible where there's like almost a covenant between you and the um, uh, toy manufacturer that there's going to be every single possible bell and whistle on the figure. Yeah, this this isn't like that. This is just a toy meant for a little kid. So uh, I don't mind that it has a little bit less detail than I might uh, prefer. It also has some sticker sheets that I have not applied to this set. So that might also help alleviate some of my um, um, want for more detail. Now, anyway, to transform this guy, we're going to be taking the cab, splitting it in half, and taking the halves and bring them down to the side of the legs. So, to do this, we'll split him up here, bring him down here, and, yeah, um, a bit of a belated warning for headphone users. These can be kind of loud. Especially the uh, tab that you use to um, split the legs. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these sections right here, and we're going to bring them out. These are the feet, and they have such a lovely ratchet. Now, what I tend to do is I bring them all the way up, and then I bring them down two clicks. And the reason why is because you bring them all the way up. Uh, it goes up a little bit too far to uh, have them flat-footed. Need them down uh, two clicks for them to stand flat with the ground. And part of that is just because he has so much weight that you'll end up um, pressing almost to the... Um, um, penultimate position all the way at first. So down two clicks is kind of where you need it to be. And then another um, warning for headphone users is going to be loud. And then what you do is you will just split the legs like this. And the last thing is, uh, this is the grill where it would be in the vehicle mode. You bring it back and let it hang as a butt flap. And those are the legs all done, ready for combination. And um, just give you an idea about how big the legs are. Um, Generation's wheel jack just barely goes to the knee. The shins are bigger than my hands. This is giant! It's gonna be giant! It's gonna be so awesome! Now the next one we're going to look at is uh, this one right here. This one will turn into the torso. It's a nice little car, very sturdy. The only thing you could be able to do is scuff it. Um, again, it has kind of a, a detail problem like the fire truck did, but because it's smaller, it's not quite so bad, and because on cars you would expect it to be flat, like around here, it's not so bad. And there are stickers for like the uh, license plates. Um, and the only big problem with this vehicle mode is that there's a clip right here and a tab on the window. But considering those are necessary for the transformation, I don't mind. Uh, a bit of a weird thing that the instructions don't mention is that the rear wheels can be pressed in like this, almost like they're intended to be locked into place, but there's no actual way to lock them into place. Now, to transform this is uh, very neat, actually. You will pop up the roof like this, and then inside there's this white section here that you pull out that will become the abdomen. And the ratchet here is very strong, but because 
um, the ratchet has to hold up this section here and then this car here and then this car here too. It's not quite as strong as it needs to be. So what they did is they put in a slider here. And I'll push this gray section here to uh, slot over that tab there. And once you get that in place, then it's not going anywhere. And to uh, help uh, keep that stable, one thing they did also is that these panels on the side of the car come down and they clip into the side. And what that means is that this uh, slider here is very protected, so you're never going to accidentally hit that slider and uh, disengage that lock. So that's a, a nice bit of engineering for keeping this thing stable in the hand. Because otherwise you might conceivably, um, while you're holding him, knock it off and then it just starts collapsing on you a little bit. Which would be unfortunate, but it's not a problem at all, which is very nice. So the next thing we're going to need to do is bring out these orange bits right here. The instructions say to tilt the car so that these things, these little red tabs will uh, be uh, fed out by gravity. And then you squeeze hard on them and pull them out. That's very uncomfortable and it, like you can see a corduroy mark left on my finger there. It's not comfortable to do it that way. So the way I do it is I start flipping the head forward. I stick my finger in and push it out. Very easy. Bring forward the head and here is the torso all ready for combination. So bring this up. The way it's going to work is that this slider right here will go into this slot right here. And it's going to press down on this little red tab, angled red tab right here that will keep it in place. If you are going to remove this from the, um, the torso from the legs, what you need to do is you need to pull down on this tab right here that will pull that little thing down. So anyway, to combine it, you push it in like this, clip it in, and here we have the uh, legs and upper body all put together without the arms. And it's huge, like, look, the upper body is bigger than my fist. That is awesome. Now the next car we're going to look at is uh, this car down here. And unlike the um, fire truck and the um, the car that formed the um, upper body, this one actually looks pretty nice. It doesn't suffer much for being a transformer. The most you get is um, you get some panel lining around here and back here. And that's about it. And sometimes it will come apart like this. That just means you haven't uh, pressed it together quite hard enough. But otherwise, it's a very nice car. Rolls very well. And is just quite nice. To transform it, we will be popping this back like this and bring it up like that. Then we'll take this section here and we'll rotate it on that hinge right there. And then there's a little red piece we're going to fold out. And then once that's out, we will push down the uh, wind um, the rear windshield here to um, keep this from flopping. Next we're going to do is we're going to pop this out, pull out the fist, bring this down and click this back once. That's my preference at least. It gives them a slightly better pose. Bring this up and the way it combines is it just slots down into there. Now the way it actually hooks in though is that there's a little slot right here and a little tab right here. To disengage this tab you slide forward on this bit right here and then uh, that allow you to pull it back out after you put it in. So we'll put this in like this. And now you're starting to get an idea of how big this guy is. How briefcase this guy is. So we have one last car to look at and this is honestly the best looking of the bunch because it has a police tampograph, a badge tampograph, it's got this gray trim around it, it's got this little thing right here, it's got the siren bar. It is the uh, best looking of the cars because it doesn't suffer at all except for this one transformation seam right here. It doesn't suffer at all for being part of a transform transforming group. Now transform this is almost identical to the other arm. You pop this up, then you pop this up, and then you flip this thing around. And then you pop this out, bring out the fist, and then you're ready to go to combine it with a quadrant. So you will slide this in down here and we are all done. This is quadrant all combined and he looks amazing. <laughs> The burgundy color mixes so well with the night with the uh, nice white color. Um, and this one is kind of an off blue. Um, I don't know how well you'll see that on camera. Um, and I, I actually like how well they did that because it makes it different than the other two white cars without making it not fit with the color scheme. It, look, it looks a little bit different, but only if you're actually looking at it. So it fits in very well. So the color scheme, the orange inside there and on the back here, the whites, the burgundy, the just all the details. It's just such a nice looking uh, robot mode and because it's so big and beefy like 
This guy is the literal definition of beefcake in a giant robot. He just looks awesome. Now, as you can see, he does kind of lean back a little bit. You can alleviate that by um, bending his knees for a little bit, which will give him a slightly better posture. Makes him look a little bit better and makes it so he's looking forward, not slightly up. Anyway, yeah, I just, I love the way this guy looks. He looks so good. He looks so nice. The combination is fun. The vehicle modes are good. It's just such a good figure. If there's any problem I have this, with this guy, it's that his head is a little bit simplistic compared to how detailed the rest of his body is. Because the rest of his body has a ton of detail on it. Um, for, for posability, he doesn't actually have that much posability. He's very much in the Power Rangers and Super Sentai uh, boat of posability. Which kind of brings me to a, a point where... I don't know why Bandai's not making stuff like this. I mean, I know that uh, Kyoto Ryuji had lots of awesome and big stuff like this, but not quite like this. The last time we got something that was big, but still kind of simple, they didn't have parts flying everywhere, was um, basically the Super Train Megazord about 15 years ago. I want something like this again from Bandai. Bandai wishes it could make something as awesome as this, because this, the Kyoto Ryuji stuff is fine, but it doesn't hold a special place in my heart. This thing does. I've only had it for a couple of days, and I know it's my favorite toy. So, uh, yeah, it's just a great toy. I don't think I'll ever recommend another toy as highly as this. Anyway, the possibility, the arms go around 360. They're a little bit limited by the car parts up here. They do have uh, some in and out at the shoulder. You do get some um, elbow articulation, although it's only in and out. Um, if they were able to uh, put a uh, swivel in there to um, make it rotate, that might make it a little bit fragile. And the point of this toy also is, it's a kid's toy, so it can't be fragile. So that's part of why it's uh, a bit limited. Unfortunately, you don't get forward and back hip articulation. Um, but it makes sense why, because of how heavy this guy is. Putting more than one joint in here, one joint that's necessary for the transformation, by the way, which is like this, would make it almost um, like tempting fate to make him fall over all the time. So I'm happy enough without this, especially because of how much weight he has to deal with. He might not be able to balance in any kind of pose anyway. So I'm happy enough with this. You, um, you get a knee uh, joint right there, which is quite nice. And if you want, you can uh, pose the toes. So again, very much in the um, Super Sentai realm of um, posability, you, you also get a uh, rotating head. So, if you're not into Super Sentai style posability, like if that's a problem for you, and I know it is a problem for lots of people, I see why you might not like this figure, but if you're into Power Rangers and Super Sentai, there is no reason you shouldn't like this guy. You should be salivating for this guy. And um, yeah, that's about all I can say about him. I can't gush more than I already have. He's just, he's a great figure and I highly recommend him. He's my favorite figure. So anyway, I reviewed Transformers, Power Rangers, Tobots, um, Macross figures, Digimon figures, lots of stuff like that. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.